We've been waiting for this one, the Lincoln Nautilus Hybrid. One of only two hybrids in this class. Nice and quiet. Nice. Good acceleration. Good brakes. <laughs> I like it. Actually, we're going to talk about the brakes in just a moment. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you want to engage and grow your audience, or maybe you just need a new website, we're going to tell you all about how you can do that in a moment with Squarespace. Right now, what's under the hood of this thing, Ann? A two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a hybrid system. It's matched to a CVT and has 310 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive. Now you don't have to get the hybrid, you can go with the regular gas. It's a 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder and an 8 speed automatic transmission. 250 horsepower, 275 pound feet of torque and standard all wheel drive. Very smooth and luxurious, Andrea. Mm, very. Uh, but it also is a premium brand, so we're going to find out what do you get with it? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a 48 inch panoramic display, an 11.1 inch touchscreen with Google built in, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, power front seats with lumbar support, heated and ventilated front seats, leather trim seats, driver's seat memory, a heated steering wheel, a wireless charger, 360 degree camera, 10 speaker premium audio system and Lincoln Copilot 360 2.2 vision. In the U.S., some of these features are not standard, like ventilated front seats. Oh, look, Andrea, it's the piano key shifter. Yeah. Not my favorite. <laughs> no. So what are we going to put it in? you got to put it in S for subscribing. If you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop, and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review, twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure to like and subscribe, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrew to see what's going on behind the scenes and to get a question in. More on that halfway through the video. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto, and the links are below the like button. Well, we mentioned it off the beginning. There's only one other vehicle in this class. That's luxury, midsize, five passenger. That's the Lexus RX. Now, coming up in questions, coffee and cars, stick around for this. You've got some great questions about the screen, uh, which really is the showstopper in this vehicle. All right, so how are you liking the ride? I really like it. I mean, I think that that is the standout of this vehicle. That's what I like the most. It's comfortable, it's smooth. It is fantastic acceleration and passing power on the highway is terrific. And Lincoln really puts an emphasis on the fact that you have effortless power, smooth and quiet. All of that is absolutely true. It feels to me, Andrea, like you're getting Mercedes-Benz level of ride, comfort and quietness mm -hmm. at a discount to that brand. Yeah, for sure. This does feel like a luxury experience when it comes to the way that it handles. I think the steering is pretty good in this. I thought it would be a lot lighter, mm -hmm. but you know, there's different drive modes. You can put it in Excite to spice it up a little bit. Not a lot changes, but I would say that the steering feels right. There's great feedback. What I'm not crazy about are the brakes. They feel very soft to me. Yeah, and they can be a bit grabby, so mm -hmm. they're not precise. Like sometimes they feel a little mushy, as yeah. you just mentioned, and other times they kind of grab a little bit. So that's something they could definitely work on but back to the adaptiveness of this automobile you put it in excite Andrea the biggest change for me is the suspension mm. it, when you have it in normal it's really traditional luxury soft and excite you actually then feel the road if you are interested in the adaptive suspension it's the reserve model that comes standard with it it's not available in a package on the lower trim so you'd have to go with this one so it doesn't get a perfect 10 for drive because the brakes is something they could definitely work on for the regen and all that. But the goal is luxury product and they achieve that goal. I think traditional luxury is really it. And, and when people are buying a hybrid, they want a quiet cabin. We're on the highway right now. This is amazing. It is incredibly quiet and smooth and, and eats up those imperfections in the road. And we've got big ass 22 inch wheels on this. I am shocked that it is this quiet with 22 inch wheels. Could you imagine if you went with the standard 19 inch, how smooth and even quieter it would be? I'm impressed. The Nautilus comes standard with roll stability control, active noise control, acoustic laminated front door and windshield glass, and Blue Cruise with four years included. 
Now, I think that this is just the right size for many people and one of the best looking products in their lineup, if you ask me. Yeah, it's bold, it's commanding, it has a great presence on the road. I think the styling is a home run here for Lincoln with the Nautilus. So this is a highly advanced vehicle, highly advanced drivetrain. You're gonna see the interior in just a second. Wow. <laughs> and they didn't go totally freaky weird with the door handles, mm. Andrea. They're kind of quasi different. Mm. They're still a door handle, but they have capacitive release on the inside. Yeah. I'll take that over hidden door handles. Yeah, I'll do the same, but I still wish that they were just regular door handles. I got a lot of wishes, don't I? But yes, they are definitely something that you could live with for sure. The Nautilus comes standard with LED adaptive headlamps, LED tail lamps, power folding exterior mirrors, 19 inch inch wheels available 20 21 and 22 inch wheels you get a tire repair kit with the nautilus but there is an available 18 inch mini spare tire the reserve model comes standard with it and you can get the option of a black painted roof our test model has the jet appearance package on it so it's got a good combination of body colored and black exterior accents and that package comes with the 22 inch wheels the only problem if you get the jet package, you have to play Paul McCartney jet <laughs> on a loop indefinitely. Just like that, we change positions. Andrea, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're anything like us, we don't know how to produce a website layout and SEO. We're good at producing content. We don't know anything about that. So what we're gonna do is build our Squarespace site with easy to use tools, like a professionally curated layout and styling options. So everyone's needs are different. What's important to us is uploading video content and then organizing that content. It's easy to do with this. And if you wanna sell items, you have flexible payment options. You can use PayPal, credit cards, that's all included if you have a commerce site. So head to the description below and click on the Motor Mouth link to get 10% off your first Squarespace purchase. So we're gonna be doing this ourselves, so make sure you check future videos to see the progress. Premium product, premium price tag, you get inside, anybody who sits in that seat for the first time is gonna go, wow, wow, what is this? I know, showstopper in here with the screens. 48 inch panoramic display here and then you've got an 11.1 inch touchscreen. Some of you have said on Instagram, why do you need that other screen? Well, you need it because that's where all the big functions are. There are widgets within the screen. So you can take those widgets and move them to display them on the right side of the screen. So what that is, is just display. That's just like the monitor on your computer. The screen below is like the computer. That's just this display. So you can add things like the clock, tire pressure, fuel economy. You can put your music up there, but everything is done in this touch screen. Riddle me this, Andrea. Do you like this? I don't love it. I think it's just so much stuff. A lot of this information can either be in the touch screen or could be in a digital driver display. I get it. Anybody who loves tech is going to love this. Maybe I'm just not as forward thinking. I, I, I don't know. It, all it really is, is the way I described it to Andrea, all it really is, is all the information you would get on a regular screen, just blown up really big. Yeah. Like, do I need my clock to be eight inches wide? And do I need to have the weather like eight inches on the screen? I don't, I don't think so. Um, we're gonna talk more about how you can turn all of this off in a moment in uh, Questions Coffee and Cars. But what Lincoln has done so well is the upscale feeling that you get in this vehicle. The materials mm -hmm. are gorgeous. Um, and also the storage. This center console is quite clean. It's a bit of a floating idea. You've got storage underneath. Lots of storage here. The door pockets are wide and it's comfortable. We've got the 24-way power seats in here um, and, and they're pretty good in this Nautilus model. Now, I mentioned it earlier about Mercedes-Benz and if you look at their electrified vehicles, they have have that big hyper screen that is their version of something like this but I would say the materials in this model specifically the one we have is actually as good if not better on some of their trims because we've had some of their cars where the interiors have not been that great yeah. I think the materials like the aluminum in the doors uh, the stitched leather and vinyl on it is 
better than theirs. Yeah, you've got ambient lighting in here and there's lots of different color combinations that you can go for from a, a light gray to a light taupe to this beautiful blue and black combo interior. This comes with a panoramic sunroof that opens and it has a shade. And what I really love is this Revel audio system. Mm -hmm. We've got the 28 speaker 3D system in this model and it's fantastic. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think that you're getting the same level of stuff you get on a Mercedes-Benz at yeah. a deal. Here's the available features for the hybrid models. You can get the Rebel system with a slightly less speakers at 14, 24-way power front seats, the panoramic sunroof Andrea mentioned, digital scent, heated rear seats, hands-free power liftgate with foot activation. So what's digital scent? Well, Zach, if you get stinky or you don't like the smell of things in here, you can put a digital scent in to freshen things up. I've got a digit and a scent. You ready? <laughs> Pull my finger. Oh, no. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> Well, I've been banished to the back seat. Mm -hmm. Not a bad place to be because it's huge back here. There is a ton, I mean a ton of leg room. Quite good headroom. The seats recline. They also slide fore and aft. It's very comfortable. Comparing the Nautilus to the RX Hybrid, the Nautilus is a lot bigger. Front row leg room is 43.5 inches, which is almost 2.5 inches bigger than the Lexus. Second row leg room at 43.1 inches offers over five five inches more legroom than the RX. Lifting up the power liftgate, this is a very roomy five passenger utility. Andrea mentioned it, this particular model has a temporary spare tire. Overall cargo space is 68.8 cubic feet and space behind the second row at 35.2 cubic feet. Both areas are bigger than the RX. Are you shocked there's questions about this screen? Not me. <laughs> no, me either. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Isn't the screen too much or could be distracting? And it seems to take some of the visibility. Well, I find that the screen, yes, it can be distracting. There is a lot going on here. The good news is that the right side of the screen, you can put it in a calm mode, which I have done often enough. Visibility wise, if you position your seat the right way and you're sitting up and over the dash, there isn't a problem. Yeah, so basically when you hit calm mode, all that stays on is the driver information right in front of you. Everything else goes dark. So you can just toggle that on and off quite quickly. Um, is it distracting when you're driving? No, I don't think it's distracting. I think it's, it's low enough um, that you can see past it. I think it's very yeah. different whether you're driving or you're sitting because when you're driving, you're busy looking at other things. Yes. And when you're sitting, you're looking at that. Yeah, I think when you're in the passenger side, for sure, it becomes distracting. But when you are on the driver's side, you are focused on the road. And this steering wheel is quite different in this vehicle. You and think? I get, <laughs> I get why Lincoln did it. They're trying to not have it um, in interfere the with the screen. I mean, it makes sense sense. To the touch, it does feel weird because I'm not used to it, you but know, I, I like the, how small it is. You know what it's really good for people who like to one hand drive? It's yeah. actually good for, for people with two hands and one hand because when you one hand it, you just put your hand on top of it yeah. and that is actually very comfortable. Very. And then for 10 and two, it's right at the um, the turn of the oval there. Mm -hmm. That's comfortable as well. So uh, it's not it's not, not bad. It's uh, I first saw a wheel like this in Corvette. Yeah. And now that I've driven a couple like this, eh, it's okay. I don't mind it. I think I read somewhere that the air vent control is done in this screen going a little too far. Must be very distracting. I did have the air vent blowing on me. And yes, I had to go into the screen. When you go into the screen and you start moving things around, it's pretty cool that this is offered. But I agree with you. I would like to just reach over and change my vent. Do you know another car that has that is Porsche Panamera? It's the answer to the question nobody asked. Just that little button, you just move the vent around. Mm -hmm. it, to me, all it spells is a repair down the road. Yeah. Like it's maintenance, right? Yeah, it's maintenance. There's a lot going on here. Absolutely. How do they expect their old buyers to use this? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> What's that, Andrea? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this last night, and it's so true. I don't think they're going for the typical Lincoln buyer. No. I think they're going for somebody who's young, who's tech-hungry, who loves this stuff. This 
particular model is going to open up Lincoln to a whole bunch of new buyers. Two things. First of all, it's a hybrid, and we talked about it already. It's only Lexus that has a hybrid in this class, and that's the RX yeah. with a two-row this uh, midsize class. And you know what? That's great. Con congratulations to Lincoln for coming up with that. And then you get in, and then you see the, all this tech. There are going to be younger, affluent buyers who want to have a oh, luxury yeah. vehicle that's not so bad on fuel, and this is right up their alley. There are many within the tech industry that I really think would enjoy all of of this. Um, I, it's a lot for me to take in. I've had to spend a ton of time in here to figure things out, but I can understand someone who just like almost geeks out on all of this will absolutely love it. I like the flat steering wheel, Andrea. Mm -hmm. I can do my questions, coffee. <laughs> It's very easy. And now we have to get to what is the hot topic? I love how it looks for sure, but the price doesn't seem so competitive. The problem with this product is it only has one real competitor, and that is the Lexus RX. You name me another non-plug-in hybrid, and you come to this and the Lexus. So how does it stack up? Yeah, and it is priced competitively. It's not overpriced in any way. The RX starts at over $65,000. And by the time you start adding packages that Lexus offered, you can go as high as $85,000. So this top trim is priced substantially less than what the RX is at. I think that they've priced it well. Vehicles are getting expensive these days. It's not just this Lincoln. And this interior is head and shoulders. Maybe you don't like the tech, I get that, yeah. but the actual way it's put together, the materials in here, this is way nicer than the Lexus. All right, let's get into the official fuel economy. This is actually returning the official fuel economy for us and more in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. We'll do Canada first and then move on to the U.S. The Canadian pricing includes freight, PDI, and fees. The base model starts at just over $66,000, and the reserve trim is just over $75,500. In the U.S., the base model starts at just under $54,000, and the black label top trim is just under $77,000. Here's the official fuel economy for this hybrid. 7.9 liters per 100 kilometer city, 7.6 on the highway. That's 30 miles per gallon city, 31 miles per gallon highway. This Lincoln can tow 1,750 pounds with a class one tow package. And the warranty is four years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. Well, we mentioned it already. There's only one real competitor to this. It's the RX, but we've chosen a few others of similar size with either hybrids or plugins. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Our first is the Lexus RX 350 Hybrid. It is a 2.5 liter four cylinder with a combined 246 horsepower and a starting price over $65,000. The Volvo XC60 T8, but it's a plug-in hybrid with a combined 455 horsepower and a starting price over 63 grand. The Lexus TX 500H with a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder, a combined 366 horsepower and a starting price over 87 and a half thousand dollars. The BMW X5 plug-in hybrid with a turbo inline six, 483 horsepower, but spendy, ninety and a half thousand dollars. So there are four electrified SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improved. Love that Lincoln has offered a hybrid. I actually like the ride of this thing. Although I appreciate the technology in here, <laughs> it's a little bit too much for me. And they need to improve the feel of the brakes. That's something they could work on. It wouldn't be that hard to fix. So there it is. That's the Lincoln Hybrid Nautilus. What do you think of that? If you like what you see, subscribe and we'll see you next time.